Hi, this is Ginger Cook, and tonight we're going to do an acrylic painting of a poinsettia. And this is of pretty much the flower that is associated with the holidays and with Christmas. And we're going to do it 12 by 12. I'm going to show you how to draw it in. This is really a, a painting that even beginners can tackle easily. I'll see you in a few seconds, and we'll begin on how to do it. You're going to love it. And the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. Okay, so this is, a, we've done a whole series of paintings, acrylic paintings, of these large flowers. And uh, by your request, you asked, would you do a poinsettia? And, uh, and Which I, is and a I strange thought, word. We thought we should do that, right? It's the right time of year to do it's it. The right time of year, and um, so you know, John and I f searched around for some photos of poinsettias, and I kind of zeroed one in. And I've got. I'm going to show you my interpretation of a poinsettia. If you find a photograph that you like better, at least you'll know how to paint it. How's that? So we're going to start off. We have a. If John, are we? You look still looking at me? Or are we down on the? We're down on the canvas. That, again, this has been a series of these 12 by 12 canvases, and these are nice because if you have a group of these flowers, you know, it's, it's very festive, you know, to decorate, you know, with these. And, of course, you could make it larger than this, but it was designed as a square, all right? So, by the way, I want to welcome everybody to the show, and um, while we start talking about how to draw this uh, uh, flower in, um, I'm going to just, I guess I'll move this over here. And, and what I have is just a printout of the of my painting, and it's in a, it's an uh, eight inch square right now. This is a twelve by twelve. This is an eight inch square. And if you're wanting to know where to get the printout, if you go to Ginger Cook Live, all one word on Pinterest, um, you can then go to our YouTube uh, 2019 YouTube board, and you'll see. Um, uh, not, uh, it links to our tutorials and uh, that we've done for the year, and also uh, images that you can print out. So that's that's how you can do that. And what I've done is I've I've made a just just divided it in half two times, and I've made four squares. And I want to show you a new new thing. I haven't talked about this maybe a couple times on the show, but again, our 12 inches is. Um, six right here so it's going to be six on this side too some of you may find and let's make sure that we've got this correct here because that did look wrong right there this is um right here is that that's not the right mark i knew that was off right right here is our mark okay so this is uh, uh normally you see me use a t-square right and you use a t-square by just lining it up on the edge of something and then um then you'll have a straight line going all the way across if this assuming this ledge edge is parallel. Sometimes you don't have an edge like that. Sometimes you're just in the middle of a drawing, and triangles come in all sizes. They come in little bitty ones. They come in great big giant ones. You can take a triangle like this, and you line it up to the straight edge, and this could be a line, not just the edge of a canvas, all right? And then you line this up, make sure that's straight, and then just draw your line across, okay, like that. And now you have... Um, uh, you know your four pieces and that's I think triangles I have a bunch of them in different sizes they're very handy I mean t-squares are fun too but these can be very handy for other things and the other thing I want to do is I want to um, I want to do a uh, I want to do like a, a line right from the corner to the center of here and I'll do that and I can show you how easy it is even on a piece of paper like this like I'm just going to do that and just do a line right here like that to the from the corner except that's the wrong corner I guess I need this one well that's all right we can have two corners doesn't matter but this is the one I wanted this corner right here so I want it where the um, where most of this uh, the center of the flower is all right so that's that's all we have to do to um, to, uh, to to just sort of get ourselves in the middle but what I can show you here and I can maybe show you on a I want you to see this, that, that right here and here in this shape right here, if you look, this is half, right, like this. So the center is to the left of the middle of the canvas and mostly down here in the bottom square, but a little bit on the top. So for instance, we, we, it's, you know, here's your, your line here. So this, 
this center part is kind of in this area right here. Okay, just just kind of you can kind of know where that's going to go, right? All right. So it, 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 everybody's with me so far. So far, so good. So far, so good. Oh, yeah, I haven't okay. heard a complaint yet. All right. So <laughs> it's all quiet. Okay, so we're going to call this um, a square one, square two, square three, three. three A, <laughs> three, three B, three oh. B, and four. Yes. That looks like a thirty-five down there. Oh, We've, does it? Well, there's not thirty-five squares. <laughs> Well, you know, we, you can call them whatever you want as long as you do the same on the other one. Okay, so this is square one, yes? Okay, so I'm, I'm glad we put that line up there. I'm going to do it on this one, too, because that's that'll, that'll help you. Sometimes it just helps to have a few more lines, and this really helps. If you would do this with all your paintings, you would center them so much better um, than if you just kind of guess where stuff goes. Really, honestly, just so helpful. So we're saying that coming from the center of this, starting about here and up about here, here's a, here's a petal that's going like this. And it's coming down here. And the same thing here like this. It's out, it's coming. So see, that's pretty easy, yeah? And uh, all right, there's our first petal. And then we've got one kind of coming, it kind of dips under here like this. And it doesn't go too far. These are one of the kind of the, like I call the hidden ones that are sort of snuck back in here, kind of taking, filling up this space. Get in the habit of sort of, this really is good for your mind to do this. I mean, um, to really try to see where stuff goes. If you need to make some more lines or more squares, do it. I think it's really a, a f effective way to draw on stuff. And it's been tried and true. They're, they've done it for thousands of years. Art has gone on like this. You're not cheating. This is how it's done, you guys. Uh, but grid, they, grid systems. But have they always had the two grid systems, the two line grid system, or what, well, what's your no, they, there's always been some form of grid system. And if it was, there's always been some way to figure out where where something goes on the on your canvas. And um, you know, Van Gogh thought he was such a terrible artist that um, that you know he actually built a grid out of metal. Had one built out of metal when he went out landscaping. You know, he just took it with him. So he made sure that he got stuff in the right proportions. A portrait artist would sit, you know, in the old days that, you know, back in the 1800s, you know, before cameras, well, you know, some more 1700s too. And before they would put their, they would portrait, they'd put the grid in front of the, of, of the person's, the painting where they were sitting, they'd have the grid so they could see, see the person and get it correct. I mean, this is just sort of something that artists do it. have, I mean, have been done, done forever. And, we're going to come up this way, like this, not, not quite to the top. It doesn't go down below. Here's one. And we've got another one that sort of is breaching the middle of here and touches that. And then one that's sort of peeking through here. These are pretty interesting shapes because they're, I mean, they're, 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 they're pretty easy. I, I think you're not going to have any trouble. And we've got one kind of here in the middle that's doing this. And it, we only see part of it because we've got another one that's coming almost in the middle of this, right? It's coming like this. We've got another big one that's doing this. It's pretty big. It's about uh, four fingers wide, I think. Again, you can grid that, right? It's coming down like that. Little one's coming here. And um, we've got one that's sort of, you, you see it's almost like a stem part on this one. It's coming like this. And um, out from here, we've got one that's coming here, and like this. And I just wouldn't let I just wouldn't get too um, too worried about uh, uh, your your petals here because you know every flower's a little bit different, and if your your petals shaped a little differently, that's okay. All right, and just probably put nobody's one in here. gonna know. Yeah, it'll be all right. And then we, we're going to fill in a space maybe here with, let's see, I think we had this one, and this came like this, and this came. You should have almost numbered your petals. I could have almost numbered them. I'm going to bring this one up a little bit. So that there's this one. This one's kind of coming like this. And oh, we've got one like this. And um, a good wind and some these would move. Just keep that in mind when you're painting them in, right? Good wind, and they'd move. Maybe one going back that way. 
All right, so we've got a general design of how our petals are going to go, and I don't want you to overly think this, okay? Just try to relax when you paint it. it it's the colors and everything, it's going to, the impact of it's still going to be pretty fantastic. Okay? And speaking of colors, what's your background? You're underpainting. Yeah, this was just a pale uh, peach color, but you know, any light color, just white and red, just make a pale, pale pink color. A uh, peach has actually got a little yellow in it, and I think we had some painted like that already. Uh, probably the you know, peach or pink or something, but a very light color, not a white. And this has come up recently, John, because one of our students um, is using acrylic paper to paint her lessons on. And the problem that I have with acrylic paper for the most part is that when you buy it, it says it's good for watercolor, oil, and acrylics. Well, if it's good for watercolor, it's very absorbent. And acrylics can also be painted like watercolor, so that's sort of true. Okay, so that's not untrue. But if you're going to try to paint acrylics like you know, in, in thickness and stuff, it's, it's not going to behave the same way as if you were painting on canvas. So it's recommended that you take something like um, gloss, Liquitex gloss medium and varnish, maybe GAC 100 from Golden, and do a coat on the paper. But then you don't paint right on top of that. You still have to do an underpainting. Otherwise your paint's going to slide all over the place like it's uh, on ice. It, the underpainting is what... It, my, it, it's, it sits on top of the gesso, it's dry, and then it's got like little hands that are reaching up and grabbing your next layer of paint and, and grabbing and grabbing, and that's what keeps everything locked in place. So you need an underpainting even if you just did it light gray. You just need something. I like the reflective quality of the red when I'm painting over red. I think that's sort of nice, the, the red tones to this. All right, so um, that being said, we're going to... Um, we're going to put uh, our paints out and put our triangle away now. Um, good to know, though, right? Uh, Poonian asked a question about photographs are centered or not centered. They're off-centered. What's going on? And that's going to get a little bit more in our design class. We have what's called the rule of thirds. Yeah. And you'll notice that we did not put the center of the flower dead center of this. It's off a little bit. You see, that's not dead center. It's not like a target. We always move them around. I don't know if you saw the flower from last week where we... We had it down here in the, 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 the we had the other the, quadrant. The other quadrant. Well, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago. We had it in the other quadrant down here. Um, generally speaking, you want to move it around. We're not looking for bullseye targets. Now, we, I've gotten out, um, I've gotten put out. the chalk around the, my paints. i put the rulers away now so I find them again tomorrow. <laughs> no comment. No comment. Well, we, uh, we spent half an hour looking for this invisible. A invisible um, T square that's just disappeared again. That disappeared. No, I, I put it away, but I'm just saying it's so funny because I like the transparency of it, but boy, you put it down on a table, it's just gone. <laughs> you can't find it. You know, well, anyway, best to put things away. All right, so any questions, John, about anything? Why am I putting about out anything? The paint? Uh, no, but we understand we have a birthday girl out there. Oh, yeah, let's give a shout out to our one of our moderators, Liz. Uh, Clark, we want to say happy birthday to you. I understand she's uh, 38. Yeah, that's what she Doing said. well. Yeah, doing well, yeah. Well, we don't talk numbers here unless it's lottery wins. <laughs> there you but, go. But uh, anyway, happy birthday, Liz. I'm going to put a little magenta here. Um, I hope you had a wonderful day. Yeah, I, I hope, hope that too. man took care of you, took you out to we, dinner. <laughs> we, we heard that, um, that she was baking cookies for him. That that was and fun. having meatloaf tonight for him. Yeah. Well, she, she doesn't understand the uh, birthday thing. I mean, you got but, it down pat. I'm here. Wait on me. As the queen should. There you go. Well, it works for me, but maybe it doesn't work for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> works for you and me, right? Um, Sue all right, says this ginger is looks beautiful crimson. this evening. This is Napsal Crimson. Oh, you didn't crimson. hear that one. And, um, uh, no, that's Cad Red Medium. I lied. Where's the Napsal Crimson? That's this one. Here, I'll move the label. It's better all than right. moving the paint. Yeah, well, all right, here's Naphthal Crimson. I'll show you the difference. You see how that's sort of an orange red? This is a this is the red that's on your color wheel. Red is a color that cannot be made. You can't say, how do I make Naphtha red any more than you can make red, yellow, and blue. The reason they call them primary colors is because you can't They're make them. They're primary. They're primary. You can't make them. So um, we're also going to do some phthalo blue. Question here, would this be a good paint to add a little gel texture to? Um, 
I'll tell you where I'd put the gel texture on this. Not so much the flowers, but I might put it in the center here. Yeah, have the center the coming out. Time. would be very nice to put that in the center and have yeah. that little 3D. And I was also thinking, and I don't know if you, what you guys think about this, but if you were just going to make this for a holiday, as a holiday decoration, it might be fun to do some um, glitter. John just shakes his head, but I'm just saying, I know you gals out there, it might, you know, it might be fun. You could on the oh. center or just on the leaves. Um, you know, sometimes I've, you've seen those come on at Walmart or something and they have, you can buy the plants and they've got glitter all over them. I mean, you know, it's I a look. have nothing to say about this. It's a look. If I said <laughs> anything about this. You don't have to. You Everybody have to, would hang up. You just, you just have these big sighs over here. We got... We can't. It's a good thing you can't see his face. That camera's burned out. That it look, normally lets you see John. So, I'm sorry you can't see him. He's a well. I don't know why I, this has been a dyslexic day. This is cad yellow medium. That doesn't look like it. There it is. Oh, now, now it we're going to move the yellow oxide up here. Well, okay, it doesn't really matter. I'm just. There we go. This is the yellow oxide, just kind of your gold color, and it could be yellow ochre for some people, depending on your brand of paint. Um. Sometimes, you know, I think, for instance, like in lipsticks and things like that, they keep the same colors, maybe change them just slightly, and just give them a new name every year and say, look oh, at absolutely. our new stuff. And this is what you have to have. And, you know, and then I want a little bit of the zinc white or mixing white, and I'll show you why later. Just kind of cool. And also, we've got some surprises for you guys tonight as far as some of the stuff. We do? That, do I know about this? Yeah, we do. I mean, I'm just saying oh. that we've, we've got some great stuff coming up in the... Um, Coming up between now and the end of the year, this is our last live live in person show till the end of the year. Um, Until next we, but year. Next, next week we'll be doing a premiere and we'll be chatting right along with you. So we hope you won't give up on us and, because we're not doing the live shows. This is our, glad you're here uh, to, to hang in there with us on the live shows. We'll start again in January uh, with the lives. I believe it's January 8th if memory serves me right. Could be. And uh, we've got a lot of, uh, you know, so that's what we've got going here. And um, all right, so everybody's clear on the colors, magenta, naphtha crimson, this cad looks, red medium, yellow you, you oxide. Know, you know, no purple tonight? Oh, yeah, purple. So mm. it is. <laughs> we may want some purple. I don't know if we do or not, but we'll put it. Wait, hold on. Don't waste your paint. Let's see if I even use it. I'll put it so out. Why are you putting it out? Well, I might want it. But you can put it out at that time when you think, okay, now I'm ready for it. Well, maybe, but then I would be inspired. I just, you guys wait. It's like, it's like that, you know, the show, you know, there was that old story about the guy that was in an insane asylum and he refused to wear clothes at all. He just absolutely refused. And finally they, but he would wear this top, top hat, dress top and hat. And he looked good. And so the, the question was asked by the psychiatrist who came in to see him. We don't understand why you don't wear any clothes. He says, why should I wear clothes? Nobody ever comes. Well, then what about the hat? And he said, well, somebody might come. <laughs> see? And that's what I mean. I might want that. That's the same idea. You see, you just have to, you have to be with the, with the spinning mind, right? And that's why you can relate to it. Okay. You can, I, I told, you just have to sort of be in my space to get that. Right? <laughs> that's one of my favorite stories. <laughs> okay. So, what to do first? That's always the question, isn't it? I say block it in. Let's just block it in. I it's think that's an that excellent solution, in. right? So, we're just going to find a, some sort of paintbrush. I'd say the first thing is let's find a... I say, friends, let's find a paintbrush. What should we paint with? They're all in your How glass about a, um, I like this. How half about inch. Half inch. Thanks, John. He, he, he can look at this and remember, I'm still reading him <laughs> after 40 years. <laughs> You should be able to pick. I can tell from across the room. That's a half inch. <laughs> I know. You know the questions that really annoy me is the ones on the driving test. I'm going to wet this as I tell you my annoyances of the week. What's is that they'll, they their tests are geared toward men. How do you say that? There are. Because, Give me an example. Well, an example would be, how many yards is it? Do you have to stop before a stop sign? Who thinks in terms of yards? Unless you're. What do you think of meters? No, but I'm just saying that, you know, half a car length, something like that. But they want yards, and here's the deal. Um, you know, guys know that because they, they watch football, and they see all those little three-yard things, three-yard things. So those yards, are, ten, those are 
ten yard. <laughs> Whatever they are. Fives and tens. There's no threes. <laughs> There's a little tick marks. You don't even see the tick marks. What do you? Where did you come up with three yards? Oh, new football rule. We're gonna have three <laughs> yards, and don't forget your color wheel. When you're watching your Super Bowl game, three yards is going to be the marking with a color wheel. Well, that's exactly <laughs> right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and your points? What? I'm sorry. I, 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 I derailed good. you. I tell you what. And that's exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> They're trick questions. <laughs> <laughs> because it should be three yards and not five or ten. What's wrong with those people? <laughs> no, I'm just talking about the drugs. This example of, you know, oh. it's just, you know, what am I, a chemist? How many ounces of alcohol can a drunk person drink? I don't drink at all. What am I, a chemist? How, I, how would I know? <laughs> <laughs> how am I supposed to know these things? I know. It's just that, you know, oh. then you're sitting there, gosh, Sad. It's a sad day. It's a good thing they just keep renewing them, isn't it? God forbid I would take by... that stupid <laughs> test again. <laughs> I never want to move oh. to another state because I'd have to take a test. You thought I just didn't like Florida. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'll have to take the driving test again. Let's stay here. Okay, I'm going to just do, uh. we're gonna start off with Cad. Hey, we'd like Napa to thank Anna An Maria for the donation. Thank oh, you gosh, very much. thank you. Thank you uh, very much. Well, let's get serious here. People want to learn to paint. Well, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. Here we go. All right, you guys. This is. These are all sort of fun things. We get to reminiscing down memory lane here. So oh, I again, I want. Do. I just want to. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna bl uh, block in some of them in just a naphthal crimson because I need need something on here, right? And then, um, and I can easily. These are sort of the main petals um, of our flower and they're really pretty it's interesting and, and of course you know um, in some parts of the world it's still summer so <laughs> uh, I'm sorry I just that just can't call me <laughs> can you give me a for instance where summer might be right now Australia. I don't think it's summer yet. Sure it is. I think it's still spring. I think there's summers when our winter is the equinox. But anyway, you're close enough. It's you know. It's, it's summer down it's, under. It's summer. They're, they're upside down. Is what <laughs> <laughs> How do you know they're upside down? Or we're not upside. You know, everybody says they're down under. Why? Because they're the only country because down we there. We were here first. <laughs> 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 no. So it's our rules. <laughs> Oh, that makes sense now. Now I understand it. Yeah, the, the you know he who rules makes the rules. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. you know they, we were here first. We were I here think first. That, I think that makes does that make sense to you? It makes sense to talk to me. It makes sense to me, except for the people in Australia. I'm sure it doesn't. Well, I thought I'm sure if they thought about it very long, it would make total sense to them. I'm yes. Sure. Okay, so you see what we're kind of doing here. Any questions why we're just happily uh, shocking our audience with our <laughs> wines Sue, and complaints Sue, of Sue the day? Sue's making a comment. I can see the blue pencil marks through the red. Yeah, you can because this is a colored pencil, and this is our first coat of paint. But very ob very observant of you. And I haven't even painted over all of them, see? And I, this is because it's a, uh, you know, it's a chalk pencil. I, if I wanted to, I could... Um, kind of rub them out but it I'm not worried matter. about it because, I, because look they're going to get all these extra little color bits on them this is just color one see this is the thing that you just have to not be in you have to have a little patience with stuff like this because uh, you've got to be able to layer Can we have another question sure 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 you have your cad red label you have your yellow oxide label a cad yellow label what happened to nap red it's still on the board, still on the sticky thing. Okay, good. See, that's as long as we know what you're doing. It's still on so the sticky thing. So you're using the nap on this, right? I'm using the nap on this one. I guess we could take a moment, get out the sticky sheet of stuff, see if we can find something that says that. And um, here, new, new sheet. Now, somebody, these are just Avery labels that uh, if you ever want any to help yourself, uh, you know, kind of keep track of the paints on your palette. Um, here it goes, naphthal crimson. 
it's easy enough to um, just write John. They're, we'll, we're happy to send you that for, you know, no charge. Here, how's that? Apple crimson, you like that? There. Can you use a watercolor pencil? Yes, you can. You could, watercolor pencil. Sure, you could use, yeah. Absolutely. Pencil pencils are never a good idea. What kind? Uh, pencils, just no. like. No, not they, the graphite the, ones. The graphite ones, because they, boy, they don't, and particularly if you're ever doing a mural or something on a wall, they, they just they just keep bleeding through and through and yeah. through. Yeah, you don't want to do that. that. Um, I'm just painting the ones red that aren't overlapping the others. Does that make sense? Because otherwise I'll lose my design. So, um. Uh, Suzanne just confirmed she's down under, and it's summer, and they are down under. Tasmania is a little behind them, though. They're a little bit further south. Okay, so there you go. See? So, exactly so. Um, and, uh, so anyway, my point is, is that not everybody wants to paint winter snow scenes. So, um, do you have the stuff out, some of the stuff that we're doing for the Academy? Do um, you have any of that, by, by the way? I have the How VLL about? over there. The v have, some, yeah, some VLLs. I have some VLLs. Yeah, VLLs are video lesson library for those of you who don't want to know it. We've got for those of you that don't want to know it, that's what... <laughs> the, so if you don't want to know it, don't listen to her, but they are our video lesson library. But don't listen, that's the VLLs, because you don't want to know. <laughs> You're wow. on a roll tonight, aren't you? It's the medication. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> yes. If someone said, asked how my knee was, well, uh... Um, no, you know, there's no sympathy for the knee. Apparently no sympathy for the knee. But I've got better drugs. <laughs> <laughs> someone says, have you ever been drinking? No, she Medication. What do you want to show? Oh, I wanted to show just one of the farm ones because I just Oh, wanted, I love the farm ones. Uh, I, I, I tell you why. We've got a lot of snow scenes. For winter, for sure, and, and, and holiday stuff. We've got a ton of those. But we understood that not everybody all the time wanted to do that. And uh, simply because of, you know, you may just do, do, feel, hey, 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 hey. feel like painting something else. Yeah? So yeah. Uh, as I do this, I'm just going to paint a few of these things in. So in our we weekly do uh, put for our, our, our academy members, our art school, we, we every week gets they get a new video. But... Um, there's beginner videos, intermediate, advanced, box of cookies. So maybe it's not like you've got to do one every week. It's just that maybe there's something that really appeals to you this month and you want to do it or do a couple, but whatever. We, we also do, as you guys know, personal art coaching. And um, John and I discovered, we were counting it up today, that um, people have sent in, and I've responded to over 5,638. 5, Art you know, responses to personal art coaching inquiries in to the last two years. Even though we travel a lot, we never go anywhere where there's not internet. So that, that this happens every day, 365 days a year practically. Uh, we do this and uh, to you know respond to people. So um, we just thought that was sort of a sort of interesting. I had no idea it was that it felt like a lot, but it's a lot, and we're ha I'm happy to do it. At some point, there will become a time when um, the um, art coaching will just won't be available. The, the lessons will be, but the art coaching will be on a waiting list. So if you're thinking about giving yourself a gift for the holidays, may I suggest giving yourself the Academy membership? Because and the reason that you want to do that is that as long as you keep your membership, you know, if we can, you can pay, you know, just do it by the month. And as long as you keep your membership current, um, you, you always have, you're, you're guaranteed a spot, you know. Um, you guys, you know, you guys have, members have the priority of all of that. So I'm just going to do this right here and just maybe stop real close to that. So I have these in here. And and there's, a, I think there's one down in here too. We'll just put one off here like that. There we go. And, you, and, and did you notice that my brush is just damp? It's, the paint's not drying out, even though the heater's on in the house. It's Houston. It's pretty cold outside today. Uh, this has come up a couple of times as far as what's um, uh, people's paint drying out. One lady's, it's dry weather. Well, it's the dry weather, but sometimes you just can get an old tube and then it, you're just... Oh, especially burn umber. Yeah, burn umber seems to be, there's a lot of clay in it. Burn umber seems to be a problem. Um, if uh, and you start, you know, painting it jars, 
The, the paint that I've, ever, I've had the least difficulty with has been golden. Has always been, you know, I've never had a problem with anything from golden. You know, just saying. And their, their jars, what I like about their jars, here's the, I think you saw where I put the zinc white out, is that they're, they, they, you can't see through them. And I don't it's think opaque. the... opaque. Opaque, that's the word. <laughs> and, uh, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but it's my observation that jars that you can see through, and this is just something I've observed, um, maybe these are just more airtight, who knows, but they're very good jars of paint. I well, like I think the Golden knows what they're doing. They know what they're doing, and, you know, so. You're going to show right. a painting now while you're letting that sit there for a second? Yeah, I thought maybe I'd show you a couple things real quick. That's just got to dry for a second, and I wanted to show you, this is coming up in the Academy, this darling little, um, of French farm scene and originally painted in the mid 1800s and I think it could but the thing that I love about these paintings is that um, this was a palette knife painting and it, what I love about it is that um, it could be today because uh, nothing changes over there that, that you can but still you could find something like this if you were driving through the countryside of Europe today you could find maybe Italy or France uh, you might find something like this today so um, Anyway, that's one of the paintings coming up, and it's sort of a nice summer scene. So we don't have all winter ones. And then this one, another one that you might not think would, you know, would be a December painting, but I, besides all the snowy ones we have, this one I really like. It's, it's this little farmhouse and uh, just a little field of flowers and, and this tree. And the, the, what's neat about this tutorial that's coming up is that one of our members had just found a funny little picture that uh, she wanted to know how you turn it into a painting. And I show you how to take a really dull photograph that doesn't look like anything and turn it into a painting. So it's really, it's a double whammy lesson. So these are some ones that are coming up in the Academy in December, I think, aren't they, John? Uh, soon. Soon. Coming well, yeah, it has soon. to be December. Yeah, coming soon. And um, so we're going to also show you what's coming up on YouTube's. And next week is... Uh, Next Monday is the Thanksgiving week, um, and so we, we're going to re release in, the, in, in YouTube a really neat lesson. Do you have the cats? I have everything because I'm ready for our he little... Said, yeah, so he's, I've got it. I've got it. This was, I thought you guys on YouTube would, well, in our academy too, everybody's going to love this one. And get ready for um, a fantastic uh, holiday lesson. I wanted to give you all Thanksgiving week to paint it. Um, here's our, our cat with this, uh, uh, the little treats and got the, under the tree and the you know, little light bulbs and uh, kind of glowing in this, this Christmas ball. Now, this, there's four YouTube coming up this month, uh, well, and, and in December, we're going to be using something called um, uh, gold gesso. Now, uh, you don't have to buy it, but it's, this is by Daniel Smith. If you could find something smaller, it'd be great. I've had this for years. I hardly ever use it. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, this is like way overkill. But that's how we got this gold shine and this ball and the little gold specks. So be on the out lookout for something in acrylics that will be shiny gold if you want to, to do that. Because we've got like this and two other lessons that will be using something like this. So... How cool is this thing? That guy? I know we kind of gave you a glimpse of that last week, but um, we thought this was really going to be um, maybe the something that you would want to paint and have for the holidays, and we want to release it early enough so you could see it. Okay, so we're going to kind of keep going with our poinsettia, and um, in order to do the others, I'm going to take a little bit of the zinc white and a little of the red, and uh, for the other ones, other pet petals, I'm just going to come out here like this and do some slightly lighter ones. Let's see what is on there. There we go. Slightly, they just be slightly lighter, so that I can kind of differentiate them from these. And uh, sometimes when you're blocking things in, if you'll just, if you could just change the colors, that can be helpful. And um, I think I want to just get a little of this and maybe lighten lighten this one and maybe make it a little bigger here just sort of lighten this edge like that on this one because these some you want some, a lot of these petals have got a touch so um, which is really important and I want this to be lighter here this edge to be lighter I'll just get some zinc white and 
put that on there now. Then that's too much, so I'll just wipe that off. This is just dried a bit, okay? So that's going to do a few things. This is a pretty easy picture to um, to put in. Um, I want to just do a little bit right here. Let's. I think in this case I'm going to take some uh, titanium because that's a little bit too transparent. So we're just going to come close to this one now and make this where this petal sort of overlapping it. See where these two now touch like that. This petal is overlapping it. That was the with the uh, titanium white and do like that. Maybe do something right down the center like this. Well, let's try that again. Okay, there we go. Okay, just as long as we're doing that, we're just doing a few little bits of light so we don't lose our flowers. And just kind of smudge that in there a little bit like that. There we go. So, questions, John? Is the um, farmhouse an ODG? Yes. You don't remember who it is, do you? I don't. I don't either. It's an ODG. The farmhouse is an ODG, and I, I just think it's charming. It, oh, it was an ODG I'd never heard of. It was an American, I think that, but one of them that we're doing is an American artist I'd never heard of. Uh, that was really world famous, but, you know, kind of, in fact, that he was sold the, 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 That's the other YouTube one. Was that one? Which one was that? Was that was the New Hampshire one. The New Hampshire one, right? Yeah. We're, 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 oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, uh, we'll have to show that in a minute. This guy was so famous. Yeah, this is one that we're doing on YouTube, ODG. And he was he sold, one of his paintings sold for more money than anybody's had ever sold for when he was Highest alive. paid. But the sad thing was that his artwork went out of favor. He got into the Impressionism late, and then the next phase came in and... Just, out he went. He, he went out and he didn't sell. One of the things about being a versatile artist and not knowing not knowing how to paint more than one style, one of the things that's very important about that is that, um, um, a little bit of red down here, let's just come under here like that and widen this one, is that um, that's hap that happened to a lot of artists. Uh, not, you know, they their stuff was real popular and then that went out of fashion and then... They, that's all they knew how to paint. N know how to paint a lot of stuff. It's very helpful, you know. Learning how, to, learning different styles, learning how to paint different things. That's very nice. Melissa would like to know: Are a bottle acrylic paint still okay to use? Is the quality still the same? Well, it depends on the bottle. For instance, like for instance, if you're using, um, um, well, here's an example of. It's a, this is a um, the flow. The flow. Say so here's a here's a flow paint, but you know fluid paint by Holbein and Golden makes one, Matisse makes one. Th they're very liquidy and very flat, and they're really good for detail in certain types of painting. It depends what the effect you're getting, but you're going to get a very very flat look. Um, you know, uh, I the cheaper paints will not have the pigment to yeah, color as well. cheaper paints don't have the pigment in them. And, and the, I'd rather, you, you know, so we, I always have at least a white and a dark brown for those, for that kind of thing. All right, so what we want to do now is take a little Dazneen purple and a little bit of magenta and mix that together. And we want to come in here between some of these and do a little bit of dark. Okay, kind of, we're going to say there's a little bit of dark around these um, flowers, right, like this. Okay, it's just going to come through here like that, and uh, that's why I love an angle brush like this, because you can just... Um, it's versatile. Yeah, look at I'm using it, it's on its little edge, right? This one's going to be green, this is green, that's green, but this is not, so a little shadow right here maybe. Because you would like in. to paint more of Mary Cassette's paintings. Oh, the thing about Mary's, though, is that she did a lot of people. She like the woman in the white dress with a hat in the field. Yeah, okay. Um, I like those. Um, Becky's what... suggesting that we hey, paint cowboys and tractors. Well, cowboys was hers, and she added tractors for me. Becky who? 
Or Becky. Or Becky suggested that. Oh, wow. Well, Becky's very good at Cowboys. I guess we could do... We haven't done any Cowboys, have we? No. We have not and done any Cowboys. And they could be on a tractor. Well, we haven't done any tractors either, John. That's true. Though, you know, we did an old car. We've done some old cars. We did some old trucks. That ought to count for something, yes? Yeah, we did some old... See, see how it's sort of coming to life here? We aren't doing much, but... You know, some, for me, something like this can be very, um, uh, put this with this color. It just it just builds it up. So I'm going to come along here like this and barely touch it now. And just make that a little curvier. And then take some zinc white right on top of that. So apparently you're going to use the purple. Yeah, I guess I did. I just couldn't remember. There you go. <laughs> there, now see how I soften that out? Just putting a little zinc white on top of it. And just sort of soften that a little bit right there. And um, let's see, I think I want this coming down here like this and this one. And um, just get this, some centers here. Let's get, um, ooh, we've got a little bit of zinc white on the brush with the purple. Let's lighten this one up a little bit. A little bit, with a little bit of purple in here. Coming out this way. Over this one. Maybe a little more magenta on this. There we go. That's it. And then we'll take a little bit of the dark purple color and do this. Okay, so, oh yeah, and as long as we're doing that, let's take a little bit of zinc white and do this. We have a little purple one here, like that, that's coming up here. This little bit of purple right up here, like this, and I think it curves around kind of like this. It's a little purple flower up there. We'll lighten this up like that. Okay, so it's some, all a matter of just kind of fun layering, yeah. And I think I had a red, had a red one going right here. So that's the naphthal crimson again, coming out this way. Okay. These these flowers generally are in groups, and let's see, there's a little one right here too. Little 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 petal right there. All right. So, yeah, we could be doing some of those kind of things to do. We, we, you know, cowboys, all that kind of stuff. That's all fun. Uh, now, the brush has been rinsed. Do you guys make sure that when you're rinsing your brush, I, I say this a lot, but I can't say it too much, I don't think, is that make sure you're touching the bottom of the container. Find a clean spot on your t towel and make sure that there's no paint coming out when you do this, when you're all done rinsing, okay? That's why the white is sort, sort, sort of handy. Now, green and red are complements, and so my red is uh, dry enough where I can come back and make a green. So we're going to take some yellow, phthalo blue, make a pretty nice green here, a little bit of yellow oxide in it, a little more yellow. All right. That's a pretty good green. So we're going to come up here like this, and notice I haven't mixed it that much, so you see a little bit of variation in the color. Which is good. You don't want to overmix. And let's just come up here like this and start bringing this in like that. So here we go. Um, I'm kind of not there. A little bit, a little bit of variation. If you if you have a few colors of green on your brush. You can, um, then there's just, like for instance, I don't want just, just plain, so if I add a little, look, I'll just get a little yellow and like this little paint on the brush and do this, this see? While it's still wet, get a little bit of a, more of a variation. Um, let's just come up here like this. All right, you're going because we painted you out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Such a short life. Such a short life. That's it. Such a short life. Okay, here we go. Coming around this one. Green and red are complements. And what we mean by that is they're opposite each other on on the color wheel. And so whenever you have a, a, a combination of, of opposites like purple and, and uh, yellow or um, orange and turquoise, green and, um, and red, there's just something that's very appealing about the colors. And... Think about that. People always say, well, what would happen if I 
changed it to, um, uh, you know, a, a pink, um, pink poinsettia. Well, you could, that would still work. You might change the color of the green, though. You might think about changing the tone of the green. You know, uh, we're doing some fairly bright greens here, but you might want to consider doing some different ones. Hey, we want to thank our moderators for uh, coming. Who's our moderators tonight? We here? got the entire group here this evening. Oh, wow. <clears throat> we had Tonya, Wendy, Steffi, Lizzie, the birthday girl, Judy, everybody but Mona. Mona seems to be sleeping. I don't understand that. Where's her dedication? Wow, I haven't heard from Wendy in a while. Wendy, are you okay? We have missed you. We have not heard from you. Long lost Wendy. She's now, I think, apparently living over on the East Coast and had to move and all that stuff and finally got her studio sent back up. And So she might be painting again. Yes and yes. Wendy, that'd be terrific. Well, we've missed you. Wendy's a wonderful artist and has, been, and has helped John and I so much in the Academy. You guys can't know. The same with, um, with Judy, guitar. It's just, um, and, uh, you know, has just... There's a couple of people that have really made things, you know, done some really complicated stuff for us. I mean, just wildly complicated. Uh, Wendy really helped us with a search engine that was invaluable. Back in, and Judy's, back in the early days. Back in the early days. And Judy has made it possible for you to find anything on Pinterest. And she every week she's the one that, you know, reposts the, the, the newest pins and so forth. I, I still, if you guys now, here's the thing. If you're sending your artwork in for personal art coaching, if you don't push, I'd like to be on Pinterest, every once in a while, you know, I, then, then you're not. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's I, that just, simple. Cause it's just that simple. Occasionally, I, I will beg someone, oh, this is so good, let me brag on you. But, you know, when I'm doing 5,000 packs, I, I don't have time sometimes to write and say, oh, please, let me do this for you. <laughs> No, it's your, your and, responsibility throughout yeah, the form. Then, and, and then also, I want to make sure it's one of your best representations. If you say, you just use my first name only, that's kind of hard to do. People think we make that stuff up. We kind of need to know who you are for Pinterest. Yeah. Don't you think so? Oh, we forgot to mention Luann. Luann, you just haven't been chatting, so I didn't see your name go flying by. Hi, Luann. Luann's here, and too. Then, is Tonya here, too? Yes. Hi, Tonya. Hi, Liz. Hi, everybody. So yeah, so just I just wanted to I just wanted to mention that because, um, we, we, you know, we've been um, and then also the other brag the other place we could you can get your art bragged about is in our Facebook club. Now our, here's the our problem private with club. The, the, the girls <laughs> do that. They, the albums are them. I have nothing to do with the albums. It's all uh, Liz, Liz and Judy and the the staff there over there on the at the at the Facebook club. And they've got rules about how they want to the, the, see the pictures. If they're not cropped nicely, they can't go in the album. You know, that's kind of their thing. So uh, make sure that uh, uh, you know if you want to, if you want to uh, you know have your art work considered, and considered, considered to go in the album. Doesn't necessarily guarantee it'll get in there. But the albums are great because if you, sometimes maybe you painted something and you know, oh gosh. I don't know if this is very good. I think it sucks or whatever, whatever insecurities you may feel about the artwork. And you can get on the album and you see your painting next to the others and say, you know, I did a pretty good job. I think mine's pretty good. And I love what this other person did. And maybe I could uh, do something like that next time. Or what a great idea so-and-so had. And maybe somebody, uh, well, for instance, just on the other day on our snow globes that we did last week, the snow globe, um, last week on YouTube, if you, if you missed it, uh, here's our little snow globe which is last week's lesson, somebody said putting the bear put their family dog. It was a heck of a good idea. You want to get inspired, come see what the other artists are doing in our Facebook club. I mean, it's great, you guys. All right, so now you see here, this, didn't the green make a difference? It made all the difference in the world. It's starting to look like a flower. Yeah, it is. It's starting to look like a flower. Now, um, well, I've got this light spot in here, and it's got to have all these colors. So I think what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of white and phthalo blue oh, really? and a tiny bit of yellow and a little bit more white because I want it more blue than anything else. There, something like that. And I'm just going to I'm just going to cover this area in with some of this color uh, like that. I'm just going to put a little of that in the center because that's going to get pretty much covered up. There may be a little bit of this blue 
sneak it around here in a couple places and it'll be kind of pretty it just you gotta trust me you, know, you can always get rid of it yep that's gonna go in the center so that's something that you might not have thought of doing huh no yeah, it would have slipped my mind no so all right so now next um, uh, oh yeah so I've got that blue color and a little bit of magenta and I want to go back and I want to put that in this leaf here look at that isn't that pretty which just sort of that's that next little layer of stuff you know a little purple just um you'd just be amazed with just tiny little bits of color will do we have to add more color to the flower but um we got pretty we got a pretty good layer of color um just what, what we have so far okay so to make pinks you can do like magenta and white that makes a pretty good pink and let's just say I want this flower to be a little pink a little more magenta here I want this to be a little bit pinker right now this is where you can do something like this and then wipe your brush off get a little naphthal crimson and then come in here with your next layer and you have sort of a combination of colors so you start with the, maybe say a little light pink right like here like this maybe come back with a little red mix it in play with that I think you'd be surprised at how when you start layering how well this works um, you know kind of kind of mix on the mix on your canvas okay and reds are one of those colors that need a uh, couple coats they just do they don't really show up well without a couple of coats so we'll put out the naphthal crimson again it's pretty much out of that and we'll keep going here so any questions John will work this is this is the explanation of what I'm doing so somebody wants to know yeah what uh, no I'm not seeing anything right now okay question wise no mm -mm. Uh, nothing with question. Well, we have uh, Eric just made a donation. Howdy, no jokes for a flower on way home from Uberine. Well, Underine is what he has. Oh, but. thank you, Eric, so much. I'm sorry that, uh, well, I guess you're listening to the show while you're Ubering. This is sort of cool, right? I hope he's not watching. Keep your eyes on the road, son. Keep driving on the road, son. I love that. You're so cute. That this is the, um, this is the dad part of you, isn't it? The driving on the road, son, right? Yep. This is the Boy Scout leader, the dad person. All right, I'm going to do a little bit of cad red here on this one right here, brighten this one up. So I think we have up to four four males on the show tonight. Okay. In the audience. So we got Andrew here. Does yeah, he, Andrew he? came in. He was number three. Okay. A little late, but hey, we'll take him. All right, so John and I are kind of like, John has done for our Academy members, um, I don't know when he'll release it. People have asked about how to take a serious picture with your, a really good photograph, I mean, with your, camera and how to set it up and have it really be right and um you know, free and it's so good you could make prints from it when you're through with what how he does it and so he spent a couple of days working on this and i watched it this morning and i said well i said let's see you've got andrew and you've probably got mike on this and <laughs> just i'm looking at his explanation and going and um so let's I see for the, sure uh, eric you've got eric i think right? becky would enjoy it it would go over her head, but she she would have Jerry come in and watch it. She would have, yeah. yeah. So, Say, Jerry, I need this stuff here. <laughs> uh, can you do this for me kind of thing, right? Because I, I said, wow, that's a that's a cool video, John. <laughs> Just, I mean, it is. It is. I don't want you to think it wasn't a cool video, but I think, well, that's a, that's a, that's really, that got pretty technical. So he's got, is going to make a, a more simple version for those of us who want to just know how to take the stupid cell phone and get a reasonable picture that can be cropped and put up on Pinterest or something, right? Or sent to me, you know, the... the, the yeah, the, that's going to be, that, that's the uh, that's the next one i got to work on. Yeah, that's the next, because this one that he did is very cool, and I know you guys will love it. And, uh, and um, there's a, Judy and Liz and a couple of gals are going to love it, but I'd say for a lot of people, they're just going to look at that and go, what? What did you say to do? But he does show you how to get the glare out. To so you never even, have a glare. Even on shellac one. It's a total, total varnish, shiny, shiny painting. He's got the tricks on how to get the glare out. And this is for, they'll be for our Academy members. They'll just be a, you know, video, just not a weekly release, just a video that we've added as a sort of a, you know, kind of a bonus lesson. 
I'll start up my own little section to put my stuff into yeah, the technical stuff. Technical for stuff. The academy stuff. Yeah, technical stuff. And then if you if you guys have more technical questions, he he will add to that. Got a little purple shadow in here. I'm gonna put. Maria that on would here. like to know what caused you caused you to choose the blue for the center instead of a dark color. I know the answer. Well, you'll have to watch and see. <laughs> <laughs> Because I've got a lot of blue in here, I went back and put right, and uh, and on all the darks will be put in by by hand. All right, if, if that makes sense. So let's just do this. Let's do a few of these, and we'll just keep the, the. We're not we're not doing veins on all of the um, flowers. Just hinting them. You know, this is impressionism. Yeah, this is. You just, have a photograph already. Exactly so. Here's a little, uh, but I am going to get, there's a little cad red here, maybe brighten this one up a bit on this side. Um, maybe get a little bit of um, white and cad red. And kind of maybe do a little bit of a lighter edge on this one. Now this purple has had a chance to dry. See, just start to bring out the colors is what we're doing. Hey, um, we'd like to uh, thank Robin and Taylor Green for their donation. Happy holidays and thank you for all you both do. And listen, we thank everybody because what we've got now is our fund going to, to we have a fund for the new computer, and we we're just we have a special fund, and these donations are now going toward the new computer, and we, we have maxed it out what we're doing because we're we're just at the limit of what our computers can do, so that is our next. We big keep purchase. up in our game. You know what we do need to do is quit up in our game. Yeah, I know, but you know, well, we can't help it though. Um, anyways, well, and. The we always strive changes. for the best. Yeah, strive for the best, and and um, so anyway, that's our next. Eventually, we'll have one, but it's all being put aside for that. And we're still doing, um, we're still doing. Um, though I want you know, we're still doing the uh, academy scholarships, and and we're doing those, and they keep coming in. Anyway, so we're well. doing that, and the scholarships. So they they have not. Wayne, so you're you're sort of doing a double whammy when you help us with the with the, the um, funds to to buy computers. You know, to, um, help us get a new computer. We're getting we're also um, uh, scholarshiping people, and um, because of doing that too. So that's kind of like a double thing. Does that make sense? Yes and yes. All yes right, I yes. want a little bit of a shadow right here. I'll make this a little darker. Like this, like on this one, I think. A little bit of a shadow, right? Like this. See, and then um, acrylics dry darker, so you see I'm doing a few little light lines around here, like that. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, this would be a perfect time to do so. We want to thank everybody for the thumbs up. Do we have a nice group out there today, by the way? We've had a high of 420, 428. Well, I think that's cool. Joining I think us that's this cool. evening. I think that's great. Um, we're sort of at the mercy of who YouTube decides to tell that we're live. You know, those of you who know about us know it, and then YouTube tells people or they don't tell anybody. It's just one of those things, right? <laughs> so anyway, we appreciate everybody that came to the party here. Um, I'm going to just take a moment and dry all this. John, do you have some stuff you can be showing people about what some of our students have been doing that's pretty impressive? Uh, <laughs> yes, Justin. I do. He does. So while he's doing that... I've got to get names, though. I've got to get names. I've got to get names. Hold on. You can't just arbitrarily... No, no. He's, well, I'll keep painting here a little bit on just these. Just a little you bit. See, I, I, you see, I just keep... Um, I keep going over the reds. Do you guys see what I'm doing? I just keep going over the reds. Because um, you just, they just require that much paint. And I want this one to be a little brighter here, like this. It's all about layers. Yeah. We, layering, we, layering, layering. We say that, and I think people aren't sure that they think maybe we're kidding, but we're not. Make this a little darker in here. All right. Like, like this. There we go. All right, John's got some stuff. I'm going to just take a minute and dry this because I don't want you to learn any bad habits and just kind of fudge it. Let's let's dry while okay, we Wait, can. wait. i got to make sure I hit your microphone and not mine. All right. So you talk for a second? I'm going to talk for a second. I hope that was me. Do it again. Talking now. Okay, now you're gone. All 
Ha <laughs> ha, got rid of her. I'm taking over, I'm in control. I know you can still hear a hair dryer, but you can probably hear me above the hair dryer. This is done by Heather Johnson. Uh, absolutely a fantastic job on this little piece. This is our, I don't remember what we called that one. But uh, it's in our video lesson library. Beautiful job, really, really outstanding. Let me get the next one up here. This one, um, I think, let me give it over there. I think that was Lanny, Lanny McPherson. That was our fish we did on YouTube, and she put her own little twist on it. Another fantastic one. I love the use of color on that one and the detail she put into that one. And this next one, Love is in the Pond, the Mallard Ducks. I believe that is by our own Steffi Jane. Steffi, take a bow. And that's the ones we've got out there right now. And I think you guys have done a fantastic job on those. Thank you, each and one. She should be about done now. And she probably wants her microphone back on. Okay, boss, you're back. Oh, okay, great. Wasn't that, weren't those terrific, you guys? I think they're terrific. And if you, if, if, you know, I'm telling you what, our Facebook club is a place where um, you, you, our viewers and our Academy members can share what you've done. We love to see it. I get excited. I just, if you tried a tutorial and, wow, we're, we're excited that you've tried it and shared it with us. And I tell you what, we've had seen some good ideas. You showed those fish, did you? I showed the fish. I showed uh, Heather's rendezvous. I okay. forgot what it was called. And then the duckies, Steffi's duckies. I, isn't that just amazing? I mean, I just tell you what. The you, ducks, you, I think, were 16 by 20? Um, I think it's no, no, I no. think she painted hers 16 by 20. Yeah. Ours, no, ours were, was. Our, we're smaller. She painted hers 16 by yeah, I've 20. I've been working with a gal. She wanted to see the, the original photos, which I put on our, and she's going to do a 30 by 40 of them. Well, I that is a big the, duck. I think those ducks are pretty <laughs> enough to do that, and I think they're very. I think they're really elegant looking, and and they're just you know their their coloring is very different from what we see in, um, you know that I'm the mallard ducks I'm used to. Of course, there's all kinds of different mallard ducks. All right, so I want to just take a minute and uh, take. We had to dry all that um, that green and uh, that red so we could do some green, and I'm going to say I've got a little green. Oh, Kim Carr's joining us from sunny Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, Kim's been driving all the way. She drove oh, down there, there two days, and she's there. Yeah, wow, that's kind of cool. So I was going to give everybody an update on my knee thing, my knee thing. So oh, let's hear about it. I figured I would do that. Well, the thing of it was is that, you know, everything just kept hurting. wasn't a happy camper. So finally I got, I said, I need a new, um, you know, orthopedic sports doctor to go see. So John and I went this week to see a guy last week i guess last week we got we, got, we found a new doctor and um uh uh he, he was marvelous and i'm just going to do something like this i'm going to cover this one up like this um anyway he was marvelous he he uh said that basically what's wrong is i've got like you know arthritis in the knees basically and caused some swelling and bursitis and all that junk. So, all that junk. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's all, all very painful and not fun. So, we got a new shot of some sort of gel stuff, not just the cortisone six shot. Months which we gel. Tried to, it's this th th thick gel, looks like motor oil, and they put in the knee. <laughs> and then, um, and then it gave me some sort of um, uh, anti inflammatories to keep the swelling down around it so that the pain would stop. I'm going to make this a little darker here. I think I just. I don't think I had this. This this has got to go. This one, <laughs> you're gone. Sorry. I kind of like that guy up there. Did you like him? Well, I know. He shouldn't have gone right in the corner though. No, he had. He to took go. it right we're to just, the corner. He yeah, should have gone so, off the one wing. So we're just going to do a lighter version one here. Just another one right here like this. We we'll just suggest a flower there like that. A little petal there. So a couple of little leaves right there. I just wanted to kind of clarify that. There, just something like that. There we go. Hey, we'd like to thank Arthur for the donation. Thank you, Artie. Thank you, Art. Thank you very much. So, so apparently, 
this is this this happens with the passing of time or sports lots of sports activities that you do when you're younger eventually these things happen and um at some point in a couple of years down the road they may well you know talk to us about some you know knee, uh, you know knee replacement surgery but um i'm hoping that um I've avoided going up and down our stairs all week and just kind of been hanging out doing stuff at the computer downstairs. And so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to uh, be good as new by January or so. That's that's my thought. It'd probably take a month for all this to kind of calm down and settle down where I'll just be walking around like nothing ever happened. In the meantime, I've got a little a fancy little cane that's all decorated and cute. You guys want to see it? Want to see This is adorable. Want to see this? <laughs> You gotta see. I mean, I'm sorry. This is so cute. Look at that with the. Yeah, that's can the you feet. See? Yeah, let's just stomp that all over the paint. Now let's see the handle. Slowly, yeah, slowly. Little, so I got this little there cane go. thingy here. Is that yeah. cute? I got that. And then um, for our trip that we're taking at the end of the week, we rented a scooter so that I wouldn't be walking a lot. So anyway. Because you said you don't you don't overuse it. Yeah. So it's not like physical therapy. We got it using it is better in this case. Resting, it resting is the same to be the thing. You got to right. use a little bit, but he said do like the elliptical bike without the with no resistance. So you're just yeah. moving it. Yeah. So you're moving the gels and stuff around. But other than that, keep the weight off of it. And okay, so I'm using a small little brush here. What size is this, old master? It looks like a. Sizes? It looks like a three eighths. It is a three eighths. It says right there on the brush. <laughs> How and can I tell that from across the room? I don't know. It's just be clever. So we've done white, yellow oxide, and cad yellow medium. And we're going to make these little dots here. Now, John thought this is where you might be able to, um, you know, add some texture. Right now, we're just, and they're, they're touching. This isn't like stars on a flag, you guys. They're, they're touching. There's a pattern on these. Uh, they're all kind of hooked together somehow. Um, in little, and they're in clusters, so there's a cluster, kind of as opposed to miscellaneous dots everywhere. I know that the temptation is to go miscellaneous dots everywhere, but you'll notice I've left a little blue space so you could see that, okay? Okay, we'd like to thank Sally the, for the donation. Oh, Sally, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. And uh, we're hoping everybody has this terrific Thanksgiving um, uh, next week, and uh, I think when we we weren't sure when we were going to release the video for uh, for next Monday, the cat one. We weren't sure where it was going to fall into place as far as the releasing for our for the next month. Uh, well, five weeks. And our thinking on this was that um, you you would need some time to uh, to get this ready for the holidays, and we couldn't waste any we couldn't let any more time go by. We had to make sure that we had the um, holiday videos out where you would have time to do them and um, do you know what what's the holiday video the one for the academy do you, do you remember when that's being released John which one the the one for the church the academy um, yeah I know I thought that was over Thanksgiving too wasn't it what are we no, it's this week Oh, it's this, this week. week. Oh, then let's show it. Great. Even better. It's this week. Yeah, church okay, is this week. Okay, and then Thanksgiving was the... Um, no, it's, no, it's Thanksgiving is the puppies. Oh, were the dogs. Yeah, this is fantastic, the dogs. So wait till you see this, you guys. You're going to love it. All right, so this is our first little group of yellow um, uh, dots. Now, here's the thing. Yellow is opposite purple on the color wheel. So if you've got purple on your brush and then you go to do yellow... You're going to have a brown dot. Just, gosh, I don't know why my colors don't show up. That's why, because you've got to make sure that you, you know, you either dry, you clean up the brush in between. Um, we can do orange. We can take a little bit of yellow and uh, add red medium, and we can do little orange ones. That we can do and not affect these these ones. We can come back and do some of the orange color, um, like that. We can add some of those. And see, these are almost, um, but I want to make sure that, that these are kind of a bit more random than, um, there we go, in our shapes, here we go, some orange. Yellow is one of those colors, too, that if we, because we didn't do them white, I'm almost going over these a little bit with more, just pure yellow now, touching up a few. 
John, you want to grab that painting and I'll show him the, the dog and the, and the other one because you guys are going to be so impressed. And also, we're going to we're, we're making a special video tonight and we will do a, a, just a quick uh, uh, premiere on the lineup for the whole 30 days. But, um, okay, this is our center. Let's have some going down this way. Like so that. you want the puppies? Okay. I want the puppies in in the um, the church. I want everybody to see that uh, for the academy. I thought you were show the church. You didn't show the church. Well, maybe, but it's this week, so we're going to show it again. Maybe not everybody watches everything. <laughs> How is that even possible? I know it. It's so crazy. Yeah. Take it easy, my so pups. So we're going to go back with a little bit of the. Let's try some magenta and yellow. That makes an interesting bright orange too. You know that? It's a different color orange. Should be. So, there we go. I don't want to say how much I've enjoyed the fudge that was, you know, we got as a gift. Um, I, oh, the fudge was marvelous. Just so I think this marvelous. was her last year she was doing this, Carolyn. Yeah, so, so nice. Love this fudge. Absolutely loved it. And uh, now we're just going to go for some darker reds here. All right. So you put that where for me? Oh, right here. Okay. So I'm going to just put this aside for a second and let it dry for just a second. And I can show you these other things that needs to dry. All right. So this week, you guys, in the Academy, this is the, um, this is our holiday painting. And I thought this would make a beautiful card. This particular church was one we found in Halifax in Canada. Um, and uh, I just made it winter instead of, um, instead of fall. And we, we, we thought it was beautiful. And I think the whole idea of this is really pretty. Don't you, don't you think this is a cool picture? So that's, that's the um, Academy for this. Uh, VLL Academy. for release for this week. VLL for this week. Yeah, that's the VLL for this week. And I think, I think this is really neat. I love this one. And then, we knew you would have some time over Thanksgiving. Because <laughs> so, you're going to need it. So, you're going to back out to see this. I'm backing out. So, this is our... Expectations. This is called Expectations. And I love, you know, Lancier was the original artist of this in the, in the 18, oh, 18, mid-1800s. And... I love the, um, the the maroon color that he did down here on the on the floor of the barn, and the little ch the chain, and these two dogs, and I love the old wood. And again, this is one where we use modeling paste on the the actual barn itself to give it some texture and raise it up. Kind of a cool idea. So I think it, you know get ready, you guys, for you know for this big release over the uh, uh, holidays for Thanksgiving for the VLL. Now okay. we're going to be doing a video of our upcoming releases, but so we'll have the dates and everything in it. So yeah, so you'll be stay able to, tuned to the YouTube you'll, channel. You'll Make sure you subscribe. You're look and, for and good time to join the academy. And this was really interesting because when I was totally through with this painting, I, I looked at it the next day and said, you know, there's something wrong with the mouth. It's not right. And we did a supplemental, and we showed you how I corrected it. And the reason I just didn't cut it out and and not leave it in is I wanted you to see how you can look at something see that it's not right, and then fix it. Sometimes, you know, there's like the magic of television kind of thing where, oh my God, this woman never makes a mistake. It's all perfect. Nothing's ever perfect. You've got to, but you know that you can fix it. And I, seeing how you can fix it, that's the key. Okay, so it isn't right, fix it. And this is what I tell people when we do our personal art coaching is, if I say change the mouth, it's your, your painting's not ruined. Hmm. Just, you know, acrylics, watercolor it would be, or oil it could be totally ruined, but... Not acrylics. We love acrylics. Not acrylics. So those are thus the art for there. I think we'll, um, I think we're okay here. That's still a little tacky. So um, maybe I'll dry that. You got anything? You, you I do. Quick? Just one second. <laughs> yeah, one second. All right. I'm pushing I'm gonna, buttons over here. No, and the reason I'm drying it is because I want to go back with the purple, and this yellow's too wet, and I don't want to contaminate it. So we're going to go back with the purple. Okay. I get that. All right, we'll be right back after these messages. Hi, this is
this is Ginger Cook, and this is the time of year when you're thinking holiday music gifties, and maybe you want to gift yourself a gift and uh, make sure that you get what you really want for Christmas or for somebody else. And I want to just comment on our fabulous uh, T-shirts. That uh, this is our newest one, Taz, um, and it's uh, you know put a tiger in your art, right? Isn't that cool? That's from one of our academy lessons. And I'll tell you what, these T-shirts, I'm in them all the time. I'm wearing one right now with the fish on it, the fish eye. Do you have an eye for art? This is the one that says that. I love this one. The cat did it. Yes. And, and this has been one of our favorite ones. So, you know what? If you're thinking about, um, you know, what to get yourself for Christmas or somebody else or maybe just a birthday gift, here's the deal. I love these T-shirts. They wash really well. The quality is superb. Um, I practically live in mine. Just I have a whole group of them, some with paint all over and some not. Great fun. I, remember, um, if you want, the cat did it. And listen, that because this is going to air at some time, I'm going to kind of put it in front of my face here, right? Mm -hmm. it's, the put it air, there may be more. So check out the whole lineup of, of fabulous new T-shirts that we've got available because we keep adding designs like, like Taz, and uh, I think you'll see a few more that might surprise you. So anyway, remember, it takes about two weeks to get them. Order them now and make sure you have them for the holidays. Mm -hmm. See you soon. Okay, so this is dry, but John wanted to remind you guys that besides our video lesson library, we also have a special uh, a monthly class that's called our Wave and Water Master Class. You don't have to be a master of a master painter to paint the water, but if we feel if you paint water and that's all you paint, either waterfalls or lakes or streams or oceans or waves We're or whatever. We're going to make you a master. You'll, you'll, you'll master that and, so, and all the different ways to paint it. And I'm so proud of this piece. This is uh, what is Peggy's it? Cove. 12 by uh, 20. And mm. it's Peggy's Cove. And this is from our photographs. And there's, I actually had three reference photos for this painting, okay? Which is really kind of cool. In fact, I think I've got I threw no, them you away. Don't. I think I have them right here, too. I'm going to show them to you. Because I put, oh. them, put them in here. They were still up on this. They were still somewhere. I think I had them. Not here. But so we had a reference photo. For the rocks, we had a reference photo for the clouds. These were all photos of John's. And then we had what the rocks would look like dark when they're wet. So you saw all, and then some of the waves. So I used three reference photos, actually a couple more than that, um, to to create this. And this is a really, this is probably one of our new favorites. most new favorites for an acad for Academy Wave and Water Masterclass lesson it's uh, give you time to maybe get this size canvas it's 20 by 12 by 20 12 by 20 you could make it longer than that too if you wanted but th i think this is really one of my favorites and i absolutely love how this came out um there's a lot there's a lot of hours in this one this just took us uh weeks to film and edit so anyway that's we've got that way water master class and um, did you know that you can sign up for the master class for just a month if you ever want to, you know, if you're a VLL member, it's, it's not that much to add the master class for just one month. And then just tell John you just want it for a month. He'll tell you how to do it so if you ever want to do that. So anyway, that's there. I think we're ready to keep going with our poinsettias. Any questions? I love all your paintings. Thank you. All right, so we're going to come in here with some purple dots. Break some of this up. And the reason we dried? Yeah, it's nice and dry here, like this. So the purple can sit on top of that yellow and not cause a problem. Yeah. I'm sort of using the corner of the brush. I guess I should show you how I'm doing this. Maybe that would be helpful. I don't. Do you think so? Here, I'll just use well, the back of this I'm piece of paper. Up. Can you do a close up? I'm already close. All up. right. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it, the brush down and then just spinning it in a little circle. Just the tip of it. Just the tip of it. That's it. It's just this motion with my hand, the tip and then this. If you try to do it with a pointy brush, now this is kind of interesting. I, I think you could do it with a smaller one too. This is even smaller than that. What is this? A quarter inch? Quarter inch. Quarter inch. But if you try to do it with one that's just a point, say like this. 
you'd have to wet it. It's a little harder to do. It almost goes straight up and down and then do the same thing. See? Straight up and down and spin it like that. You don't want to do it at an angle. But to me, you almost want straight up and down. A little bit of an angle might be okay. And just, just, but you got to keep holding the point. Don't pick it up. And then just, tw like you're boring a hole and, you know, that's how you do it. Okay? I don't know if you needed to know that, but it occurred to me you might want to know that. So, here, you go away now. We're all done with you. Hmm. All right, so um, here, so I'll show you a couple using this, this brush, like that. It takes longer. Yeah, I think the angle to, brush to, does to, a better the job. The angle brush is much quicker. I'm just a little lazy. The angle brush is much quicker. So this, something like this takes a little longer to do. So I, I and probably the, the smaller angle brush would um, would work good too. Here I got the little quarter inch, but you know you can, the big one works all right. And um, I'll just bring this alongside here like that. So we just keep keep adding the highlights. I mean I know I know it sounds kind of funny, but that's kind of what you do. You just the center part was a little dark. They're not all the same size. We'll just add it. And if I have to, you know, cover up a couple of the yellow or orange ones, I don't mind. I, I can certainly do that. And uh, just take the little little brush and see where I need to add a, a shadow or a highlight. Maybe I want to put a shadow on this one. Just, okay, something like that. So, um... That's kind of how you do that. Then, we'll go back with the next bit, bit of highlights. We're going to do something almost white. Maybe white. A little bit of cad red medium. Just very, very light. I'm going to come back and I'm being careful here not to just barely touch it. Just kind of do a highlight on some of these orange ones. Try to avoid the purple. How's that? Avoid the purple. A little bit more white. Just on a few. And believe it or not, there was a little light green in these. Um, <laughs> don't know why you wouldn't believe it, but... <laughs> Here, here's a... We just got a donation from Tess. Yes. Thank you, Ginger and John, for all your hard work. Learning so much, could not afford private lessons. Any thoughts about a tutorial on a pothole view from the from you who cruise regularly? I believe it's supposed to be a porthole view, but she called it a pothole view. I thought it was kind of cute. Oh, porthole view. That's a good idea. We ought to do that on one of our square canvases. Yeah, that'd be fun. Okay, so I'm going to go right back into the yellow now. And this is the next layer of yellow. I'm just going to drop it on here. Do you see that? Not that, touching the purple, though. Not touching the purple. Because it's still wet. It's still wet. And I'm just dropping this on here. And if I think I have, then I'll just wipe it off. So this is a yellow is, you know, this is your next layer of color. You saw me do a little of the green. And, uh, okay, so just... That's what makes these pop. Is there's just there's just a few little layers on that. I don't want to put out any more paint, but I think you're going to see purple and yellow and um, purple are complements. So it just this is a kind of a. Becky's asking who all is going to do the meet and greet with Ginger and John at the end of December. Has a date been set in stone? Well, we have not got a date yet, that, but that's uh, for those of you guys who live in the Houston area, we're not asking anybody to fly in. John and I regularly eat at this restaurant, and we just thought it might be fun sometime between Christmas and, uh, you know, that and week between year. Christmas and New Year. So if anybody was in the area somewhere handy where you didn't, don't, don't want anybody to spend any money to come or anything, but, you know, if you wanted to hang out with us at the Sweet Tomato there, um, we'll, we'll set a date and a time that we'll be there, and... Um, and hang out for a couple hours and uh, maybe do a giveaway and uh, have some fun. I thought it might be a fun thing to do to just meet some of the local friends. I guess what friends. we need to do now is 
we we're, we're have a question in the Facebook group, and so I guess you have to be a part of the Facebook group to chime in on the date and stuff. We're going to probably put a post up next for those that want to come, pick a date, and then we'll do a... And we'll put, yeah, and we'll also we'll send we out do. a newsletter when we have it, too. We'll send out a newsletter yeah. with that. So if those of you... I know some people really hate Facebook, and um, they just do. They have yeah. their own reasons for hating it. And, I um, can't blame them. John's probably right there with you. <laughs> Um, here, I'm just going to go right out of the oh, tube here. Oh, I love here. when you do that. I'm just going to, I just need this brighter, and it's just, here, going to go right out of the tube on this. And then I'm going to brighten up with some of the orange. Here's where you can, you know, get a little bit of, you want a few bright things. Here's the, um, uh, this is the uh, light orange. It's a um, cadmium red light, okay? And I can just... Just take my brush and look at look at the difference. See, and I'm just gonna just don't want to put any out because see see how this other orange just sort of disappeared. It so pales. It just pales. Pales out. in comparison. So here we go. This is a Holbein paint. That's a, a Holbein, yeah. Uh, no, actually, this isn't Holbein, John. Oh, this is that. This other, is that, that French, light. Light This is that French company, Acrylic Light. Yeah. And it's not particularly expensive. Cinnamon gave me a tube, said try it. Yeah, and that's she's when been she using, it using it and it. quite likes it. And it's got some very bright colors. And um, you should probably ask her for a set of our stuff to give it a compare. Yeah, to complete them. So there's a a little bit of that. Okay. So that's that's kind of. I mean, I think that's kind of nice. Sometimes you can just take something. And this is where, when you own a lot of different reds, like for instance, here's a Matisse red light, for instance. And I'll just show you. This is where flowers and stuff, if you're big into flowers and own a bunch of different reds, that's where you might want to have them. Um, sometimes that can make all the difference. Some, somebody's red doesn't pop. If you're using a liquid text basics, you're not going to get the popping color as you will in their, their professional line. But here, let's, let me just show you how this red is popping right here now, just adding that color. Um, where are you going? Wait, wait, wait. You're now we're just coming up with... Okay. I'm just going over a few of the flowers with this color. Yeah, I but just, it really pops now. Let me back it, it, it out just, so we can it see just, it. It really does pop. And let me just, so like, for instance... you do a couple more? Now yeah, I'm like, for up. instance, right here. Look at, look at that. Yeah, the computer see, froze for just, a second there. These are, um, these are colors that really... Um, uh, can make a difference. Like, for instance, let's see, where could I put this? Maybe down here like that. Just a little bit of red here. Maybe I want this red to touch that. Here's that, That's that uh, CAD red light. What does it look like when you add white to it? Let's see. Well, that's a totally different color pink, isn't it? Do you see these, these pinks? So, like, for instance, if I said I wanted a little of that color right there, just as an example, for instance, then I might go, come back over and and you know blend it out but I'm just saying that um, you know, let's wipe that off the brush now come back with some red now blend that out and then just do something like this but you can for instance if you're if your reds aren't as bright as you'd like them to be consider trying something else this is called primary red by Matisse I've done a video on YouTube called adventures in red and um, primary red again is a different red so where, where one might put that just and does that show up? It has a little bit of a pink tone to it. I think this this flower here could definitely use something. And then we'll do a little bit of, maybe do a little bit of purple in here like this. And just put a few little veins in this one, right? There we go, like that. So, I mean, you, you can have a lot of fun with this. I, I want to, um, maybe this little dark shadow right there on this one. Notice they're not all outlined, but they are... Um, uh, um, they all have their own little unique features to them. All right, what do these two colors look like here? There's a that's that's purple and that uh, that red light. And look at this look at this kind of deep shadow color. I'll put that right here. There there we go. Where where can I put that? Ooh, right right here. Ooh, maybe on this one. There we go. Right, like that. 
So I played with your reds. That they're fun to have. I probably have a couple others I could show you, but those are kind of fun. And then we're going to go back with our last highlight, sort of our color surprise. Let's take um, phthalo blue and white. Okay, we would like to thank uh, Miss Herlong. I never know how to say your first name for the donation that came in through the PayPal system. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. We appreciate it very much. All right, I've got a little. I could have used an angle brush, but this is the one I grabbed out of the water. And I want it to be for kind of a light turquoise color. So it's phthalo blue, white, and a tiny bit of yellow. I'm going to just lighten this up right here. And come back with a few of these kind of turquoise dots. Okay. People always say, I love... You, you'll put a few little bits of this color in a painting. People won't really... It's not that you're doing that much with it. But it does something about, it just does something to your senses a little bit as far as your eyes when you see it. So it's not like you do a lot. You just do a tiny little bit, and it can make a huge difference. And let's just put a little more white with that. And if we really thank everybody, and I think the suggestions coming in tonight are, um, are great. We hope you guys will... Uh, will join us next week for the for the live chats and the premieres. We, you know, we John and I, we never go any. We, we, how many videos we've done in the last five weeks to be able to leave again, travel for a month? I mean, that's an extraordinary amount of videos that we've got done. But I think they're all great quality paintings. I think you're going to be really surprised to see. You'll be how pleased cool. with them. I think they're going to be pleased with the results. Cassie would like to know, could a glaze be used on the petals to give a burgundy effect? If so, what color glaze would work? Um, probably ultramarine blue. and, um, and uh, Build it slowly. And, and build it slowly. You know what I would do, though? I, I would take a, a, just a small 6x8 canvas and do some red strips and then just try some different glazes. Yeah, see which see, one appeals to the rest of the painting. Because to make a good burgundy, you would, I would take ultramarine blue and um, red, and I can make a very good burgundy color. So I would think an ultramarine blue would, um, would work very well. I almost feel like doing one for you just to <laughs> see. Don't you guys, everybody wants to know that, don't they? You know, that's been the question tonight, and I've just been holding back. Has that been the Everybody's big... been asking. Out of the 400 and some odd people, they were all asking that. Were they all asking that? Yeah, they say, how do you make a burgundy? Um, well, ultra, uh, we didn't put any ultramarine blue out. Let me just move this painting out of the way. I think this came out pretty well, though. Don't you guys think this came out kind of cool? Yeah, it did. You know, and I mean, again, we... Is the other one... Put the other one over it for a second and move it. I want to see the, if the colors are different. Sure. Because our still is very burgundy looking. Yeah. Slide it over a little bit. Yeah, here. I think they're pretty close. So touch I think I've got a little bit of. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. You just, can move it now. Thank you. Yeah, I think I've maybe I've got a little pink here and there, but I think overall we're we're pretty close to what we had. Okay. Um, but I think that where's where's those little canvas sheets? I don't have any sitting here. I just need there used to have a pile a whole here. stack of them right there. Well, where would that there be? On the other side of the water. Is there? Oh, yeah, so there is. <laughs> well, yes. How do I know that from the other side of the room? I don't know. How does she know that? Okay, so this is a neat one. Let's just do this purple one. Huh? Okay. That's kind of cool. Glass right. is in session. All right, so that was the question of the night, yes? So what would this look like? If we, we did the red and then we did the pinks and we wanted a burgundy glaze, yeah? So let's start with our... That is really a nice background. You can see it go I through hate this. to use this background, but we're going to use one. Let's just put a flower <laughs> in here like that. Let's just put. Let's put I can some see it's really, it's really phasing you. Let's. You all know I like it. I'm just far be it for me to say it wasn't awesome. Wait. Okay. <laughs> so there's these colors. Let's try some different reds. Here's a, just some naphtha crimson. I oh, know that's a cad red medium. Here's some naphtha crimson. Here's like like that. I'm just, I'm just playing now. We, you wanted to see it, right? So just, well, what could we do here that would make this, um, here's a, like a pink color. So you want to see what, what, when you're talking about glazing it, we should do some different colors, don't you think? So here's some magenta, maybe one coming up this way with magenta. 
Here, we'll make that one magenta and maybe this one partly like that. Let's come up this way. Okay, what are we going to do with you? All right. So I, I would say that's a fair representation, right, of some, of some different reds, yeah? So you wanted to know what would happen if you glazed over these, yeah? Well, the secret with glazing anything is that you've got to um, have it dry, okay? You can't have it. It, it has to absolutely be totally dry. So but I'm going to give you just a, John, got something you can show us for a minute? I've got that. Wait a minute. Can I find that one? All right. He's got something he can show you while we dry this real quick. Because I think that's a legitimate question. You know, how, how do you glaze something? And, 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 you know, what would it do? What would it change, right? In fact, before I do that, while John's looking, let's get a little purple and white here. Let's do a few little purple ones, too. Let's do a purple. Let's do a purple, light, light purple one here. Um, let's do one of these, too. And we'll just, we've got a few little purple there, like that, right? There, that's a, that's a good test, yeah? Gorgeous test. All right, that's the test. We'll just dry all that. We'll see what happens, yeah? All right, we've got a 30-second spot. Go. another vacation photo again this one looks like crap i didn't i think i could ever learn to paint not every vacation photo makes a great piece of art send your photo in to ginger with personal art coaching before you pick up your brush To be done with it. Yeah, well, you there's only a 30 second spot. What are you doing over well, there? Well, I'm drying because because <laughs> again, if it's wet, you know, guess what? It doesn't work. All right, I'm going to use some satin glazing medium. By and, golden. By golden, and um, put that right there. And I guess we're going to want some. Um, a clean brush. A clean brush and ultramarine blue paint. Ultramarine blue paint, which is where. Here. Right where you left it. So, all right. So then we're just going to see what that ha what happens with that. And that's I think that's a legitimate question. Here, this is a clean brush. Um, I don't think I'll put any water on it. Just put a little bit of the ultramarine blue and the glazing medium. All right. Now let's just go over this one and see what happens. Hmm. So. It did sort of turn this this petal burgundy. Let's try this red. You have the white there. Well, that's because I had this white right yeah. here, right, right there. But I, over that, because remember I did a kind of a light one too. So let's try this one here. Let's try this. It's not changing it that much. It really isn't changing it that not much. Not as much as you thought, or thought it would. Not as much as I thought it would. So then maybe you'd have to dry and layer. You are getting sort of a, a blue tint to it. Really, the, the color burgundy is made by, so I would say that generally speaking, that's a failed um, experience. You know, that, that's a fail. You're getting a little bit, but, um, but not enough. I think you'd have to play with some you'd to, have get to, really but the, I bet to get the color is, you want. This is what you've got to do. And then, of course, if I dry that, that's fairly burgundy right there, right? Kind of a burgundy. This is what you have to play with. Um, if you did a little bit of, we mix some reds together. Let's mix the magenta and um, uh, and blue together. Made more of a purple. Um, and then tried that. Let's see what that would do. Let's actually mix a burgundy tone on this one. That that kind of does it. If you did that, okay. You see, that's a little. Do you see what that one did? Yeah. I put a little magenta, a little bit of red into the ultramarine uh, blue, and then and then you got a burgundy color. So that worked, right? Not so much over the cad red. Let's do it over this one. So there. Okay. So Christine's suggesting violet over the red. That's kind of what you did with the. Well, yeah. That's why I added the. You know, that's a violet magenta. color. That's that's how we made violet was ultramarine blue and 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 um, 
Magenta. In magenta, okay. So, um, but basically, uh, what, whenever you're going to do something weird like this, take something like this and just do some tests. Dry it and with a hair dryer, see what it looks like when it's dry. Maybe you need to do two or three layers of it, you know, because because glazing is very thin layers like cellophane colors of paint that tints it. Okay, but I can even see right now that we've definitely got some burgundy in there. Yeah. So yeah, so I think that that kind of get uh, you the right direction. I would probably do thinner layers and just dry between them and just build yeah, it up. Yeah, probably that would be, yeah, so I agree, John, thinner layers and dry between would be better than one thick layer. And I don't think I had it all that dry anyway in 30 seconds. hate to tell you that. 30 seconds doesn't really dry stuff. But you get the idea. So, But the whole idea behind that is just try whatever you're going to do. On a baby 6x8. Just try something first. Okay, so this is our painting for the night. I think... Um, uh, we'll uh, just take a moment and sign it, and I think that we uh, we have a successful painting. And I hope you guys have a wonderful uh, Thanksgiving, and um, I hope that we get to chat with uh, uh, some of you uh, next week on our live show and ask questions in person. I love reading the questions, John. You know, there's only so many questions that we can answer in a you know I think live we get show most like of them. this. We're good. But we're getting most of them. Of course, we've got. We want to thank our moderators, uh, everybody, for um, for hanging in there and uh, and staying up late. I know Judy had kind of a fantastic uh, weekend, and she. I don't know if she was able to stay awake for this, but if you well, did, she Judy, wrote, she wrote back to me, asked, "Are you awake?" And it took her a half an hour to come back. Yeah, I'm. I'm here. <laughs> still, still awake. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. We okay. almost believe you, Judy. Almost. All right. So we got it signed right there, and again. Um, Thanks, everybody. And, and Daisy, Daisy would say, wouldn't it just be easier to paint the petals burgundy from the get-go? Well, for me, it would be. <laughs> but this is an afterthought. You've done it, and you go, what if? Well, yeah, there's always that uh, what if. In fact, I had a pack come in today, and somebody had, uh, one of our uh, per people had painted a gal in a white dress on against a very light background, and I suggested she glaze over the dress very thinly in some sort of color, like a kind of a pale purple or a light blue something or something. Something to pop it up. So that it, it had a little bit more contrast, maybe do a couple different colors of glazing. So that's the kind of thing you can do. And um, anyway, this was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, we thank you very much. And uh, uh, keep in touch. And if you've got any questions, uh, you know, write us in, uh, on YouTube or contact us on our website. And thanks again, everybody. For the donations and have a great holiday and uh, this has been a fun year um, one last question hmm. wait a minute oh darn it disappeared I had it what was the question do you remember what it was something about the Brazil of the other red oh drat no well, you know what? Know. They'll have to just ask us on <laughs> ask us on YouTube. You know, sometimes yeah. we try to get as many as we can. But just ask us on uh, uh, no on Facebook. Just write the yeah. question on Facebook. Probably get fifty answers. Yep. You know? There you go. Um, All right, everyone. We appreciate you, and thanks. And we will be back live and in person in January. But next. Next Once much Monday night, I'm telling you, we will do premieres. live premiere next Monday. We, we haven't gotten rid of this. We'll still be here. But that, that, and, and we've got some fantastic tutorials. You're going to love them. And now, where is our... John's going to say, say it off. I can't I say it's it. off. I got it. We're ready. Bye. Bye, everyone. Well, you guys, I don't think I can look at another commercial about how to unstop the toilet or... Um, Maybe you too can learn to draw that, you know, we, we have to have those in our video in order to kind of cover some costs. But I thought it would be fun as long as we were doing it to put a commercial in for ourselves. So here's the, here's the commercial from me to you. I want you to have a wonderful day. I want you to be the artist you can be. I want you to get up in the morning and say, today's the day I'm going to be happier than I was yesterday. This is my commercial and wishing you the bestest, happiest day of your life. And art hugs from John and I. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook's Academy. 
Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching praises as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see. Ginger means the world to me.